Well, just over a week ago, we were sitting here on Upper Left Sports talking about uh, really the biggest news at the time in college football, mm -hmm. and it was a national story that BYU, uh, the anytime, any team, any place team, uh, was given a call by uni the University of Washington and uh, turned down the game. Yep. And we want to have a chance to revisit that story. Yeah. Uh, as a lot fair. of a lot of information's come out uh, since we posted that video last Monday. I mean, since we filmed it at about Monday morning at seven a.m. Yeah. And so here was really the narrative uh, going on at the time. The story was that BYU uh, was given a call by the University of Washington on Saturday. UW said, "Hey, we're not going to be able to play the Apple Cup against Washington State." Uh, how would you like to come up to Seattle and play? And the story was that BYU said, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, we want to see where we fall in the college football playoff rankings. Mm -hmm. Well, the rankings have come out. Uh, BYU's number 14. Uh, not a surprise to a lot of college football fans. Maybe a touch low. I'll think, give them that. Maybe 14's a touch low. I think uh, a big surprise to BYU fans who mm -hmm. are number eight uh, in the AP and coaches poll. Um, but I want to be fair here. I don't I have a lot of hobbies. I don't, uh, as one of them, uh, I don't study Pac-12 scheduling rules during COVID. Uh, it's fair. And so I do want to follow that up with, you know, one of the, the reasons that, that BYU, the narrative that's being painted a little bit here, is that if the Pac-12, if you're a Pac-12 team, uh, you are allowed to schedule another game uh, mm -hmm. if you don't have a game that week, unless there's another Pac-12 team available. Well, Arizona State and Utah's game was canceled, and because Utah was available and Washington were available, if they wanted to play a game, it had to be against one another. And sure. so we found out on Tuesday uh, that that game would be happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also don't study uh, college football teams' budgets. Uh, as a sports fan, I'm going to be honest with you, whether it be college or pro, uh, I care about what's on the field. I don't care sure. about the fiscal side of it. You know, I'm a big Chicago Cubs fan, mm -hmm. and I want the Chicago Cubs to spend as much money as humanly possible. Uh, if you watch our channel, we're both big Gonzaga basketball fans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had a COVID outbreak, and one of the big things about it was that the Zags sent two planes down to Florida yeah. so that they could um, separate players if an outbreak happened. I'll tell you what I didn't say is, gosh, you know, it seems fiscally irresponsible. The university's down this year financially. I feel like they could have saved some money. I don't care. Send the two planes. I'm going to watch my team play on Fox. Yeah, and, and we're not, I mean, we're not out here asking teams to, you know, go bankrupt and spend every dime the university has. No, that's that's not the case here. But, again, you're talking about teams that are competing are trying to compete for national championships. The playing field's a bit different. I also want to give BYU credit because uh, we can bash how weak their schedule is all we want. Sure. Um, but in all fairness, so BYU decided about a decade ago uh, to go independent. And that kind of is a blessing in disguise this year because when the Pac-12 shut down and, and a lot of different conferences shut down, A, it ruined their schedule. B, they were given the ability to go out and schedule new teams. And mm -hmm. so let's just go back real quick and look at their original schedule. Sure. There were some rumblings. Nothing was ever confirmed. Uh, rumors that they were going to play Alabama in the season opener. Um, I could tell you, had that happen, very tough scheduled game. BYU, you're not winning that game. Nobody. No, it's, a, it's a strength of schedule buffer, but that's it. Nobody wants to play Alabama this no, year. Nobody. But let's look at the, the games that were confirmed. Uh, at Utah was mm -hmm. going to happen uh, versus Michigan State. Uh, at Arizona State. Uh, at Minnesota uh, versus Utah State. Uh, they were going to play Missouri at home uh, in Provo. Uh, Houston, which they did uh, play and beat. Uh, at Northern Illinois. At Boise State, they also did play in and win that game. Uh, San Diego State, which is their one remaining game still left on the schedule, uh, North Alabama, and at Stanford. So give them credit. They did go out. They knew they were going to have a team a this solid year. solid schedule. BYU has a very solid team this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, we want to go out and, and test it. The thing is, is had they played their original schedule, you just got to look at it and say, listen, we're looking at two, probably three losses, yeah. best case scenario. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you've got a 7-3, and three, an 8-2 and two team. And if you do, that's a very solid season. Yeah. But 
we're not talking about a 9 and 0 team. None of the, you know, college football playoff talk is happening. We're talking about a good year for BYU. Got a solid bowl game. Yeah, and yep. that's really all you can ask for. And I mean, I get it as a fan, you know, as a BYU fan, I'm sure you're sitting there saying you'd still be 9 and 0 with that schedule and you know, you, you might, but it's very realistic to assume at least two out of there. Yeah, and you know, Zach Wilson and this BYU team, I, I do believe that these dudes are willing to go play any team, yeah. any time, any place. I, if they even knew that that UW talk was happening, they're probably saying, yeah, let's get it. I don't care. Provo, yeah. UW. You know what Zach Wilson doesn't care about? Zach Wilson doesn't care about, about the, the budget. school's budget. <laughs> he says, I yeah. want to be a top draft pick. I want to play every single team that mm -hmm. I can on national television, get some tape out there. Yeah. And so I want to give the players a lot of credit. Yeah, much like every school this year, you know, the players are just in such a weird position. You know, they don't have control over this season at all. The schools themselves barely have control over this season at all. Um, so, yeah, much like you're saying, man, we, we know that they would have been ready. And to BYU fans out there, I want to apologize for for nothing at all. because no, absolutely nothing. Here's what I don't think you understand is that this is all perception. You put a target on your back. When you wear the headbands, you carry the mantra, any team, any time, yep. any place. What you don't get to do is you don't get to say no when someone calls you up and asks you to play a game. You put a huge yeah. target on your back, and here's the deal. It's all public perception. It is. When UW called, if you knew – so let's, let's go back a little bit to what really happened. And a couple things happened. BYU supposedly said – We'll take the game if it's in Provo. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what that's not. That's not any place. Well, but the budget, Drew, the budget. I don't care about the budget. <laughs> Figure out a way. You, don't, you just don't get to say any team, any time, any place. Yeah. And I'll do it. And another part of that is that it didn't work actually for television. This is a game that would have been on television. The trucks would not have been able to make it to Provo in time, which was confirmed by the networks doing the game. But they said we can make it up to Seattle because they're based out of the Northwest. And so BYU said, we'll do it in Provo because if it's in Provo, it won't cost us any money to fly up to Seattle. Gets canceled, yeah. But you have to guarantee the game. Yeah. And that lies a problem is that if you know the game's not going to happen, say, yeah, we'll play you. Start getting your game plan ready. Hold a walkthrough. And then on Tuesday, when UW schedules Utah because the Pac-12 makes them, guess what, BYU? You now get to play the victim card. You now get to say, hey, we weren't we were scared. Pac-12 doesn't want to play us. We'll yeah. play anyone. Doesn't look like the Pac-12 wants any part of us. And now you know what we're talking about on this show and other shows across this country is, wow, give BYU credit. They'll play Washington. They tried. You know, they'll play any team. Like, they're in talks right now with Miami, it sounds like, and, and the ACC is trying to. Yeah, I mean, nothing super confirmed, but. Stepping in the way there. And guess what? If you play that card and you don't get any of those games, at least you tried. 100%. You know, and, I mean, let's go back. You mentioned it. It's perception. You put this target on your own back. And here's my thing is they start wearing that headband mid-season in a COVID year, Right. You start wearing that headband before the season and COVID happens and your schedule gets torn apart. We're not looking at this the same way, but you bring out that headband in a season that you know is difficult, right? We have seen, I mean, the scheduling There's that's no happened this year, no promises. nothing is guaranteed. The scheduling that's happened this year, the way schools have had to be quick on their feet, having days to put things together. It seems to me a weird motto to take on just knowing the difficulties that happen in scheduling. It's tone deaf. It is. It is. Like, you, you know that no matter what, every game that you schedule this year is difficult. It takes a lot more work than standard years to schedule a game this year. So that that's one right there. But we're living in a, in a world right now that... In the Pac-12, mm -hmm. UW was scheduled to play Oregon State last week. Mm -hmm. And we literally were getting news updates every minute. Oregon State just arrived to the airport. They're on the plane. 
people, they are flying to Seattle. This game's happening. Yeah. I mean, we don't know that games are actually going to happen. Until they happen. Until they happen. Yeah, I mean, WSU was literally on the plane, and their flight was canceled on the tarmac. So, you know, again, back to we saw a lot of your comments about the budget and how much money was involved, and BYU can't take a game that's not guaranteed. You're not alone, okay? Let's talk about that. We have conference games that are getting canceled on the tarmac every school is dealing with this. This You're not alone in this. And on top of that, again, let's, let's stay on the budget topic because that was such a big issue in our comments. You then counter-offered UW and you said, we'll play you in Provo, but you have to guarantee the game. And to me... Which you know is not an option. You, you already know it's, it's not, not UW's choice. Yeah, you already know it's not an option. It's not the school's choice. You're an independent school trying to take on a conference. It's not going to work well for you. But let, I mean, let's, it's just, it's weird to me that that's the way you go with it. Because at that point, if they're going to play you in Provo, why not accept the game unguaranteed? Right? Because two things here. One, what do you BYU, BYU is not talking to any other schools. So it's not like they wanted to lock this game in because they didn't want to risk not having a game this past weekend. Right, this is the only school they were talking to, and if you're going to play at home, that then takes out all of those travel costs that were such a big deal to BYU, a school who's facing a 20 percent shortfall, much like every other university in this country. You talk about every big sports school; they're all losing ticket sales, media. Everyone's dealing with a shortfall. You're not alone. But if you're playing at home. All of those costs are out the window. I mean, it, at that point, it's like, why not accept it? And then again, back to what you said. Let's say you do that Monday. We'll play you in Provo, non-guaranteed. Bring it comes it on. out Tuesday. UW schedules Utah. And then right away, you are out of this. You are out of the mess because you, you scheduled a game. You were willing to play. Pac-12 took it away from you. That's not your fault. You're not the bad person here. Let's just say that. Gonzaga, for example, their schedule has been twisted and turned a million different ways this year for college basketball. And let's just say that Gonzaga's schedule ended up, they weren't playing Baylor, they weren't playing Kansas, all those original games, Iowa, weren't happening. Mm -hmm. And that Gonzaga ended up playing a um, less than, than par schedule, didn't really play anyone. And at the end of the college season, Gonzaga was undefeated. And they said, you know what? Because of COVID, we're not going to do a full NCAA tournament. We're only going to take four teams. And they didn't take Gonzaga. That's what you're looking at, BYU fans. In a normal season this year, you're not 9-0. and You're not 10-0. and You are a 7-3, and 8-2, and very solid top 15 team. Okay? But I can promise you, you don't want to play Alabama. No. The best case scenario for this team is is to go play a New Year's New Year Six game against a Oregon, a team you can beat. Mm-hmm. They can beat a lot of Power Five teams out there. Yeah, they're a good team. I mean, they're not, we're not blind. Is finish the season uh, on a high note. Mm-hmm. You know, go ask Chris Peterson how the college football playoff worked for them. How playing Alabama worked for them. You know, not great. You're not Boise State either. And and we also have to. Remind ourselves that BYU made the decision to go independent, which has worked out very well for them. However, let's just say they were still in a conference right now, like Boise State was, where you have to play your conference games. You only have a couple non-conference games to get in. When Boise State beat Oklahoma, I was like, hey, these guys beat who they were supposed to beat. Mm -hmm. They earned a chance to get here. And so being a independent school, you get to make these decisions. And and again, it is all public perception. And at the end of the day, yeah. here's what happened. UW did play a game. BYU didn't. And a whole lot of people are going to say that UW beat the better of the two Utah schools. 